Hello, this is Edward, and welcome to episode 2 of Thermal Expansion from Scratch. In this episode, I'm going to take a look at power, which is the currency used to uh, make machines work. I'm going to see how you can store it, how you can move it around, and how you can produce it. So, let's get started. The energy unit in thermal expansion is the redstone flux or RF and to generate it we've got dynamos. The first of the dynamos is the steam dynamo which can store up to 40,000 RF and to make it work you're gonna need water as well as coal or a similar fuel. So we put fuel here in this uh, slot and to put water you can either pipe it in or uh, use a machine to pump it in or you can grab yourself a container like water cells and simply right click on the machine and once it's got water and coal it's going to generate steam and it's going to use that to generate energy now on the energy tab we can see that um, while the maximum power is 80 rest on flux per tick it's only outputting uh, at, a, at a lesser ba value and it's actually going down and this is because the more energy the machine has the uh, more efficient the machine is going to try to be in the generating of energy so like as the power goes up you start using less water and less fuel and when it reaches the maximum the power output is going to be stuck to 4 redstone flux per tick so it's, gonna, it's going to consume a very little amount of water and coal um, in redstone behavior you can set it so the machine only works with redstone in which case you're going to see that when the machine is off the energy storage goes down, so keep that in mind. And that's the steam dynamo. The magmatic dynamo is very simple, you just need lava and it'll generate energy. So I'm gonna use lava cells and right click the item with it and when I check the interface you're gonna see that the lava tank is going down as the energy uh, goes up. And that's the magmatic dynamo. The compression dynamo uses fluid fuels as well as coolant to generate energy. Now you can use water as coolant, but you can also use gelid caryothium. And how do you get this? Well, in winter biomes there is a mob that spawns that looks like this. It's called a blizz, and when you kill it there's a chance to get uh, blizz rods. So let's see if we get lucky. There you go. And these bliss rods can be pulverized. And what that's gonna make is bliss powder. And bliss powder can be crafted into cryothium dust. Now cryothium dust in a magma crucible will create this liquid here, which is gelid cryothium, 250 units of it. And if you put that in a liquid transposer, and this one has already 750 so I'm just gonna put that 250 now it has a thousand and it's put it in a bucket and you can use this gelid curiothium to um, as a coolant in the compression dynamo so now I've got one part of the uh, a reaction now what else can I use on the left side well the mod adds a possibility which is uh, you need to pulverize coal and you're gonna get pulverized coal and then you put this in a magma crucible and it's gonna give you a hundred units of liquefacted coal and I, here I have 900 already so now I have a thousand which is enough to fill a bucket in the liquid transposer and I can use this liquefacted coal as the other liquid in the compression dynamo and that's gonna start generating energy now if you have other mods installed, like for example um, Billcraft, you can use its own fuel as well as oil instead of the liquefacted coal and that will also generate energy. Uh, of course, if you use water, that's going to be less efficient than gelid cryothium, however, you can pump as much water as you want, you know, you can easily make an infinite water source. So that's the compression dynamo. Finally, we've got the reactant dynamo. For this, you're going to need two components, uh, and I've linked to a Google Docs spreadsheet where you can check the components for yourself, but I'm just going to demonstrate um, a couple. So, for example, for the liquid part, you can use energized glowstone. 
you can see now it's got some sort and for the solid part you can use uh, things like gunpowder, sugar or even nether stars and of course nether stars are going to give you uh, the most amount of energy so I recommend you check the spreadsheet on the description to see what kind of, of things you can combine and that's it, reactant dynamo Alright, let's take a look at energy cells, which are blocks used to store redstone flux. And we've got four tiers, as well as a creative one used for server admins. The first tier is the redstone energy cell, and can store up to 400,000 and inputs and outputs at a maximum of 80 redstone flux per tick. Uh, the input and the output can be changed with these minus and plus buttons so you can decrease the input in this case by 50 because I'm not pressing any keys but if I were pressing control then I can increase and decrease by 5 and if I press shift I can increase and decrease by a thousand so that will be useful for um, the higher tier machines which have more input and output now the configuration tab is used to determine which sides are input output or whether they are actually connected at all so the blue sides are input so you can introduce energy into the machine from there the orange side is output so you can output energy from that side and there's another configuration which is the yellow one which basically means this side does not input and does not output to change the orientation of the machine you can use a crescent hammer which is simply a tool crafted with iron ingots and a tin ingot and you can right click and the turned off face is the front of the machine so that's how you know which sides are which um, the next next tier of energy cells is the hardened energy cell it can store up to 2 million redstone flux inputs and outputs at a maximum of 400,000 uh, and it works exactly the same way as the redstone energy cell then we've got redstone energy cell stores 10 million and max input output 2000 and finally the higher tier one is the resonant energy cell and it inputs at a maximum of 10,000 as well as outputs as, uh, at 10,000 and it stores up to 50 million bits and flux and here we've got the creative energy cell which can only be obtained in creative it has infinite energy and is able to input and output at a maximum of 10,000 resonant flux per tick so does, those are the energy cells. Finally, let's take a look at ways to transfer energy. For that we've got conduits, which you can put between blocks, machines, in order to move energy from one block to the other. Uh, the first tier of conduits is the leadstone, which can transfer up to 80 redstone flux per tick, the hardened can transfer up to 400, and the redstone one can transfer up to 10,000 redstone flux per tick. How do these work? Well, let's say you've got an energy resource like a magmatic dynamo and it's working and is generating energy from lava and you want to connect this to a remote energy cell. So let's simulate the remote energy cell, just put it right here. And since I know this machine transfer 80 redstone flux per tick, I mean uh, generates at maximum, I'm just going to use the lowest tier energy conduit and I'm going to put it between the blocks. Now the dynamo will not connect automatically to this one and when that happens, because now it's pointing up, you can use the crescent hammer which I showed you before and right click it and then it'll connect. And now um, this machine should be receiving energy except for the side here is set to output so let's set it to input. And there you have it. And with the crescent hammer you're also able to click on the pipe in order to uh, make or unmake a connection so now it's not transferring if I put it again then it'll begin transferring again and same with this side so those are the energy conduits there are just a couple more things I want to show you first is the multimeter a handy tool used to read information about for example blocks, conduits, etc. In this case of energy cell it's showing me how much energy it's got stored as well as the maximum capacity and you can see uh, how the same information on the dynamo. If you click on the conduit it's going to tell you how much energy on average is being transferred in the network. So you can use it on a variety of blocks to get uh, useful results. Uh, the next thing is these flux capacitors 
which are basically used, they're like portable batteries and they're used to charge handheld items. Uh, now we've, we've got five tiers as well as a creative one for admins and if you shift on them you're gonna see all kinds of information. Now the first tier is the potato flux capacitor called Tuberous flux capacitor and it's a special one because it's not rechargeable so when you craft it it's gonna have the maximum charge but it's not rechargeable. Then you've got the leadstone flux capacitor hardened, redstone and resonant and I'm gonna left, let you shift on them to see how much charge they can hold and how much they can input and output. Um, then the creative one can send up to 5000 redstone flux per tick and of course the charge is infinite so you can only get it in creative mode. Uh, so let's see how they work. Now I've got here a resonant flux capacitor which has full charge. So, and by the way, you could, to charge them you can use the uh, machine right here, the energetic infuser. You just put them in and you can get some charge which then you can use. So, I want to charge the leadstone energy cell that's in my inventory where I can shift right click while uh, selecting the um, charge fl flux capacitor and it's going to change to that shiny uh, animation and now I can ho hover, not hover, I can select in my action bar the block or item that I want to charge and that's what it's going to do, it's going to start uh, giving it charge. Now what happens if I select another flex capacitor? Well it's also going to charge it, so you can use a flex capacitor to charge other flex capacitors. Um, so yeah, that's how flex capacitors work. So that was the end of episode 2 of Thermal Expansion from Scratch. In the next episode I'm going to take a look at liquids, how to store them, how to transfer them, etc. So I hope you enjoyed watching and I'll see you next time.